we will now take up the appendicular skeleton. An appendicular skeleton means those parts which are attached to the axial skeleton from the side. And the things which are attached from the sides are mainly the limbs, that is hands and legs. But the place where these hands and legs articulate, those structures, that is girdles, they also come in the category of appendicular. So here we will be talking about the girdles, both the girdles, that is pectoral and pelvic girdle. Pectoral girdle is the shoulder girdle and pelvic is the hip girdle. And then we will take up the limbs. And in limbs, we'll talk about the forelimb and hind limbs. So first, we would be discussing pectoral girdles and pelvic girdles. Each pectoral girdle is divided into two halves. That means when we talk of pectoral girdle, there are two halves. Each half, one half and the second half. So we can say that the pectoral girdle is, is made up of two halves and each half is made up of two bones. One is clavicle, that is the collar bone and the second is a large triangular bone which is known as scapula. So if we count the bones, one clavicle, one scapula, that means two bones in one half and the same two bones in the second half. So pectoral girdle actually gives us two halves. Each half is made up of two bones. And in this scapular region, there is a cavity, glenoid cavity, in which the head of humerus fits in. And this joint makes a ball and socket joint. We will see this with, with the help of the model. In case of pelvic girdle, again, there are two halves, but each half is formed by fusion of three bones. Three bones are fused. So when we count it, we just count one half as one piece. And that is why pelvic girdle number when we count, we say one half that is one bone or one piece and the second half that is another piece. Here we are counting the number as four because one half has one clavicle, one scapula. So two and two in the second half. In this case, one half, three have fused to form one piece. So we count it as one. These three bones are ilia, ischium and pubis. So these three bones, they are fused to form one piece. Now we will see this structure, these bones and how they are arranged to make the shoulder girdle and the hip girdle using the model of the human skeleton. So using this model, now we will first see the pectoral girdle. As we have written that the pectoral girdle is into two halves, so one half is on this side, the other half is on the other side. And each half is made up of two bones. One which is visible from the front, that is our collarbone or clavicle. And the other bone is this V-shaped or triangular bone, broad bone, which makes the shoulder blade. This part or this complete structure is known as the scapula. So one half of pectoral girdle, which is made up of one clavicle and one scapula, that makes half of the pectoral girdle. Now let us see the scapula. It is a big triangular bone, which makes the complete shoulder side or shoulder blade. And if we watch this anteriorly, we see some extension of the same scapula. And this is known as coracoid process. So scapula and anteriorly it has a, a bulge or a, a pointy thing which is coming out called coracoid process. If we see it from the back side, we see a ridge like thing. It is known as a spine or we can call it scapular spine and it also has a projection. This projection is known as acromion process. Now, if you are able to visualize this, there is a cavity here. So the cavity is formed in the coracoid process. This cavity 
is known as glenoid cavity in which the head of this bone is going to fit. This is the upper arm bone that is humerus. Its head it fits into this cavity. So clavicle is attached to the acromion process of scapula and the coracoid process it makes a depression here which is the cavity in which the head of the humerus is going to fit in. So this triangular bone which is scapula and there are two processes which are visible anteriorly coracoid posteriorly acromion. This is the bone that is collarbone or clavicle which is attached to this acromion process and this cavity is known as glenoid cavity. Now let us see the pelvic girdle and its bones. This part which is visible, this is pelvic girdle which is also known as hip girdle. And if we see these two structures, they appear as one piece, but each half or one piece or half of the pelvic girdle is made up of three bones. We can see this big bone here. This is the ilium. If we turn it around on the posterior side, we are able to see this bone, which is the ischium and anteriorly where this half and this half they fuse this is the pubic bone and in between the joint there is a fibrous cartilage and that is known as pubic symphysis but these three bones are fused so this structure that is half of the pelvic girdle is visible in the form of one piece or one bone so this is ilium this posteriorly this is ischium and here is the pubic bone so these three fuse to form the half of pelvic girdle and that is why when we count the number of bones this is taken as one and this half is taken as one because all three have fused now where these three bones fuse we find a cavity this cavity is known as acetabulum in which the head of femur this is the thigh bone its head fits into this cavity that is acetabulum the cavity and the bone the cavity is where these three bones they fuse that is the place where this head fits and makes a ball and socket joint so this is one half of pelvic girdle this is the other one and they are joined at the pubic symphysis